beautiful day. A little steamy, but not bad. But guess where I'm at? I'm starting this one a lot earlier. It is, what's today? Today is Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And um, I just stopped at the post office. And so I took my nature video yesterday. Um, a beautiful place. I'm excited to work on that today. But I didn't have this yet. And I guess what day is today? My gimbal. So this is what a gimbal is. So the camera goes on that. And no matter which way you move the handle, the camera stays still. So um, you always you always get a good shot. And I didn't realize too, you can, it has a heading on it for um, a phone too. So yay, I'm so excited to use that. So I'm gonna use this when I go to the yurt. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of beautiful things to video there. Um, and I just wanted to thank T-Bone. He's from Minnesota. And he sent me these. I got this randomly in the mail. I thought it was my gimbal on Saturday. And it's um, uh, created by US Army physician. So it's these, what are they called? They're like oversized, they're called Epic Wipes. Epic Wipes. And, and they are huge. And it says they're made of 99.8% water and 0.2% chamomile calendula, eucalyptus, essential oil, sugar-based surfactant, and food grade preservatives. And these things are huge. But, so I used one last night, you know, it's been really hot. And so instead of like, well, not in really replace of a shower, but I just wanted to feel fresh. And this is how big, they're massive. And so, but uh, you can to shower on the go. And this is not sponsored. He just said that he found them and he thought they were amazing. So I thought I'd tell you about them. This one is extra large, or these are. And um, it's a reusable pouch. So I had just wiped off and then I put it in. Let's see if I can wear the same clothes for three days. Let's set it four. Uh, I can reuse a wipe. So yeah, it comes in that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, it's gonna be a good day, right? Right. Okay, let's get the day started. And I don't know, maybe I'll see you Thursday. Maybe I'll continue today. Who knows? Who knows where we go? Okay, I'll see you soon. Good morning. It's, it's, Wednesday. Yes, it's Wednesday. And I just got ready and I'm going into work. But I thought I would tell you that yesterday a girl from work, she wrote me and said, two people quit in the pharmacy, two pharmacy technicians. Neither one of them gave two weeks notice. And I'm going to tell you, like just two weeks ago, uh, two others quit and they had been there for years um, and they gave a two-week notice but they quit they couldn't take it anymore and I told you how we were already short-staffed and I work Sunday it was only supposed to be like an extra because I'm not supposed to work in the pharmacy anymore because I quit the pharmacy when I worked there um, you know last year before I left I've never quit a job before my job was up. It was a week before I was supposed to be done. And I remember sitting in a library parking lot and being like, I just can't do it. I can't do it anymore. And you know me, I'm not a quitter and I'm pretty tough, but I couldn't do it. Like I said, no breaks, no, uh, not, you can't even think. You're looking for prescriptions. Sometimes they're put in the wrong bin and you can't find them. The stress of people, you know, being angry and not personally at you, although a lot of times that's who, you know, you're the person there. Uh, and they have no structure. Like they should make sure everybody gets their lunch, everybody gets their breaks. Um, and it's complete chaos. And to top it all, 
you only make $17 an hour. So I'm making $17 an hour. But my thing this time was that I was gonna do the truck. I wasn't gonna work in the pharmacy. I was gonna do the truck and uh, like the inventory. But then I got sucked back because I can't help myself when someone needs help and I'm there and I'm trained for the pharmacy. Although I'm trying to renew my license and uh, I have to do, they're called PPLs. Uh, so they're to keep up your license. And even at Walgreens, you have to do them to keep up with Walgreens. So I, I don't know when they expect you to do them because you have to sit down and take a test. I'm in a part now where I, it's all like math, like fractions and how you do all this stuff. And they said, I can't like be pulled out while I'm studying this stuff. Like, and here's the thing too. They just throw you in. They don't even train you. I remember like six months down the road when I got to that part of the training, I'm like, oh, this would have helped had I done this before I just got thrown in to do it. Um, and I told you too, they don't turn the air on in there. I mean, it's at a minimum that even the customers are complaining, saying what isn't the, the air conditioner working. So it's just awful conditions to work in. And for me, I was watching, um, I think it's on, is it on HBO Max or Netflix? Sorry, I can't remember which one it's, I think HBO Max, but it's called Into the Wild. I think that's what it's called. Or On the Edge, On the Edge. And it's about like these adventures. And one of the guys said something that like just explains right now what I'm going through. He said, I'm not uh, striving for money, I'm striving for uh, adventure and striving wasn't the word what did he say I'm not but you get the gist of it and that's what I'm doing right now like the whole point about the adventure and you know the first thing I did was do NASCAR but then I realized how more expensive uh, van life was than I thought and so that's why I'm working right now is because I can basically set my own hours for here um, and even though I only make $17 an hour, I would rather have my freedom of time because uh, I realized too, I don't mind working on the weekends because during the week when I wanna do something, things are usually less money. Like the year costs less. It's usually $45 a night, but it's $35 um, for me because I'm going during the week. Uh, so, um, so it's a give and take, but I'll tell you, $17 an hour and on top of it giving the vaccine so I would call that like a nurse yeah, I'm a tattoo artist I went through all that I'm an esthetician I know the skin I know I have a bloodborne pathogens I had already had my certificate um, already when I came my first aid my CPR all that stuff um, but so on top of putting prescriptions together and doing all that I mean it's ridiculous and they wonder why so Walgreens is getting rich and this is like pretty much any big corporation off the backs of people who don't even get a lunch working in a sweat factory um, giving out life-saving prescriptions giving the vaccine and not even barely be able to make it um, you know I just read too some people have two full-time jobs just to make it, and this is not political. <laughs> Listen, this is not one party or the other. It's been like this. Everything has been sliding. Look at climate. I mean, it's not like that just started. We've done that to ourselves a long, long time ago, and that's how all this is. It's like dominoes. It's all just falling now. It doesn't matter who's what, where, but I will tell you, it is the big man gets richer and the little man gets poorer, and there is isn't there is no middle class really anymore. And that's where I'm at. I would rather have experiences than what work 80 hours a week just to pay, you know, to live in a house. And that's me, that's me, you know, that's where I'm at right now. I know that's not where everybody is. And, um, but yeah, <laughs> there you go. Just enough to say good morning and tell you I'm off to work. 
Yeah, but it's gonna be, I, I think I started this because I'm like, ah, oh, do I even wanna go in? Because I know what it's gonna be like. Because it was just me and one other girl. And I tell you what, there's a couple of them that just don't wanna work. She was doing her PPLs. Well, it was just me and her. And I'm covering the drive-thru and the drive-thru is the most stressful part because they never quit coming. If I said to her, you gotta quit doing those. You have work to do. You have to help. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. But guess what? I got the yurt coming up. And uh, I get to play the ukulele. And I hope you're enjoying the nature scenes. That has really helped me. Um, that has been fun to go out and film those. Okay, enough already. Just eight minutes in. Uh, and today is Wednesday. Yes. So, hi. We'll see you soon. Bye. Good. Friday morning, but it is 3.43. I worked at um, Walgreens. Uh, and so I left there and I am at, right behind me is REI because I need to get, which I've been meaning to get since I took off on this whole journey last year, bear spray. And I'm even more, well, first of all, I think I told you the hip camp that I'm going to on Sunday, specifically put, read about the bears uh, from the DNR, and they gave the link uh, because they must have bears there. And there are bears, there's a black bear in Delwood in Minnesota, and that was in my sister and brother-in-law's yard. And I just yesterday read a story about a woman in Montana, I believe it was, she was sleeping in a tent and a bear came and the bear came, that's what I, that's a bear. Um, and her and there was a couple next to her, like made noise and it left. And her sister was staying in a hotel and the people staying next to her said, hey, do you wanna go stay in a hotel? And she said no. And so she took her food out of the tent, which as you know, I'm sure the food still, the smell still stayed in the tent and she got her bear spray but the bear came back an hour later and i don't think bothered like letting her know just like pounced on her and they said that they looked out and he was just uh up and down on her and she died the end <laughs> it's a sad story look at this hair it's like alfalfa sticking up there um so that pushed me to go buy some bear spray. So we're gonna go in, let's go into REI. I don't know if I've been in an REI before. Um, and then we're going somewhere else after that too. And then I'm headed back to Walgreens to see if they need help in the pharmacy. So, okay, let's go into REI, come on. They've got a whole section for bear stuff. The bear vault. Let's see. The bear resistant food sack, the bear horn, I have a horn, the counter assault, trail runner holster. I don't see the spray yet, but I'm sure it'll help. Get the bear necessities. I love that store. Um, so there was no bear spray where I was looking where the bear stuff was. So I went and asked the guy and he's like, yeah, they keep the bear spray behind the counter. Wonder why. And so um, she's like, do you want the eight ounces or 10 ounces? And I said, mm, I'll take the 10. And uh, so here's the bear spray. Grizzly Tough Bear Spray, 40 feet, eight seconds. Magnum 290 counter assault. Works on all bear species to deter bears from attacking humans. Oh, okay. Glow in the dark safety wedge with the string. Okay, so there you go. This was $59. $59. I said, boy, warding off a bear is expensive. But I said, it's worth it, I guess, if you have a bear coming after you and it saves your life. $59 would be a small price to pay. So, okay, I'm going to start the car. It's warm in here. So let's go to our next destination. All right, let's go. We're here at Bill's gun shop. I need to get some practice in.
so that was fun. Um, you know, owning a gun, I never thought I would really own a gun um, because I had Jesse in the house with me and stuff. But um, after she left, that's when I bought this. And um, you know, you have to be a responsible gun owner. And I haven't shot since last year, like before I left. And they have ladies night up here on Wednesdays and I'm going to start coming regularly uh, because, you know, guns are powerful. And when you're in the gun range, you know, there was a guy who had a big gun with a big boom. And, you know, that'll scare you. Once you get used to it, you know, then you're fine. You know it's coming, so you don't think about it. But, you know, being in that situation, um, since I haven't touched a gun in a while, uh, you know, it's a little, um, I don't want to say unsettling, but you know, there's other people around you and they have live guns, uh, but you're in a safe environment, a controlled environment. And that's what I'm there to do is to get better at it. I'm a good shot. <laughs> I have my conceal and carry, passed my test the first time, uh, but now it's getting comfortable with it. And again, you have to be a responsible gun owner. And if you have a gun, you should know how to use it and use it efficiently. And I even bought a holster. I've been meaning to buy one for a while. Um, you know, don't know if I'll ever use it, but because uh, I carry it, the gun in my carry case. Um, so, yeah. But uh, more practice. So, them bears are going to be afraid of me. I <laughs> got the bear spray and I got my gun. So, uh, all right, I think that's enough for today. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's five. I'm heading back to Walgreens. Um, I actually have my battery plugged in there. While I was working, I plugged it in uh, and I'll see if they need help at the pharmacy. So what's today, Friday? So I'll see you when I see you next, maybe tomorrow. I don't know, I gotta work at nine. Who knows what's gonna happen. Okay, see you soon. Good morning. Sunday morning. At least when I look in here, it's like now that I have my hair up, I gotta get my hair highlighted. I get it highlighted. <laughs> See how much it's grown out. Um, anywho's, uh, it's Sunday and I'm feeling a lot better. I have been so tired. I mean, I think I told you how much I've been working. And listen, it's not for Walgreens. You know, four techs have quit in the last four weeks and I would quit myself but knowing that I only am going to do this until I leave in October I can hold on and I'm not I am a lot in the pharmacy because I know it and I have my license but um, I actually do the truck when I quit I said I didn't want to work back there anymore but now I'm back there because I can help and it's for my co-workers um, who I really like and uh, yeah you should hear some of the stories that I have. And listen, I'm very nice to everyone until you get a little punchy with me and I'm short on sleep. And uh, I, you know, I debated whether I should tell you a couple stories, but I am gonna tell you, because you know that I am not an angel and I lose my cool sometimes. Well, I didn't lose my cool with the person, but uh, this lady came through and she had ordered her medication a long time ago. So what happens is we have thousands of prescriptions, you know, waiting for people to pick them up. And there's like six places you can look for a prescription if you can't find it in the first place that you look. Anyway, that's why we're crawling on the floor and whatever. But, so she comes through and she's like, it says that my prescription is ready. And I said, well, we don't have anything. And then I looked it up and I said, well, you didn't pick it up. So if you don't pick it up within 10 days, we put the medication back, you know, on the shelf um, because we can't have, imagine we, there'd be no place for us to work if the people that didn't pick up their medications, we didn't pull them. So every day we pull um, the medications that haven't been picked up within 10 days. And so she comes through and she said, but it says it's done. I said, yeah, it was done, but you didn't pick it up and it's been 10 days. And I'm still very nice, you know. She goes, are you new? I said, nope. 
not new. And she said, well, I need my medication. I'm going to work. And I'm going to tell you what the medication was for. And uh, so it was for <laughs> no delicate way to say this. And I'm not very delicate, you know. It was for an itchy crotch. And I'm like, listen, if you haven't picked this up for 10 days and now it's like a super emergency that's on you and we're backed up I said you can pick it up I'll send it through but it won't be ready we were short-handed I said we're short-staffed we only have one pharmacist and we're already behind so it's gonna be like an hour she goes well I'm on my way to work and I need it and I said I'll see if I can push it through and I even asked the pharmacist and he's like we're behind it'll be ready in an hour and I said it'll be ready in an hour <laughs> and uh, I said listen she was getting she was yelling at me. I said, you don't have to yell at me. I'm doing the best I can. And she said, I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> okay. And then she took off. So listen, if you have a prescription for an itchy crotch, you should probably pick it up right away. Don't wait over 10 days and then get mad. I can see why she was probably in a bad mood, but it's not my fault. And then some guy came through and he was picking up a prescription for his wife and it was an inhaler. And she wanted two inhalers because she needed one for the cabin and she explained that to her doctor. It's like, okay, she was expecting two inhalers. Well, there were two in there, but insurance only covers one. Insurance doesn't care that you have a cabin you go to and you need one there and you have a home. You could probably just put it in your purse and carry it with you to the cabin. Uh, and so the guy's talking and you know, if you take the prescription, you, you can't give it back because once it leaves the pharmacy, you can't return it. And uh, this lasted, honest to God, 20 minutes. And then he's like, well, should I take it or not? Should I take it or not? And the one that they were take, you know, was up was $115. And so he's like, here, you talk to my wife. And I was at the drive-thru and he put the phone on the thing and sent it through. And I'm like, hello? And she's going through this long thing. And he said, listen, insurance is not gonna cover both of them. That's the reason you can buy the other one outright, but insurance isn't gonna cover two inhalers just so you have one at the cabin. She says, well, how much is it uh, just to buy it? I go, mm, $699.95. And she didn't say anything. She goes, okay, I'll take that other one. And I'm like, okay. And then what happens is the people behind them get mad they're like, I never thought they'd leave. And I'm like, insurance problems. And I'm going to give you a big, big, big tip, okay? The drive through is just for the convenience of you sitting in your car and not having to get out. It's not the fastest way. Actually, it would be the slowest way to get your prescriptions. So if you want to get your prescription fast, unless you see nobody in the line, um, come in. It's faster because more people usually are working the counters. Only one person can work the drive through And um, things happen, like insurance. Like if you come up, you know, I always wonder because everybody has things come up, but when it's them, it's a different story. But if you're waiting, then you're like, when were they gonna leave? And we do COVID tests. Sometimes there's four people in a vehicle that needs COVID tests. So you have to do each one of them. So there's a plethora of things that can happen at the drive through So it is not the fastest way to go. Okay, there's my TED Talk for Sunday morning. <laughs> um, I am headed to do a bunch of stuff and then uh, I'll be on my way to the yurt. So my plan is, I know this might be getting long because I started this like Tuesday, this video. Uh, I'm going to show you when I get to the yurt what it looks like and then I'll stop the video then and then I'll, the next video will be me at the yurt. So. Okay, I gotta get going. I got stuff to do before I leave. Okay, see you soon. So I just had to show you quick. I'm here to dump. And they trust you. So it's only $4 to dump here. And uh, I put my credit card number in there before because I didn't have cash. I do now. Well, change. So I put that in there, $4 to dump. And you just put it in there. And I'm gonna tell you where it is. This is the best place ever. Their mom and pop shop. And it's called Mike's LP Gas RV Parts and Service. It's in Maplewood, Minnesota. But I wanted to show you this. She's a beaut and she's for sale. Look at this. 
it's a Concord Coachman. You know what I like about this? It's got like a truck front. So it's like you're driving a regular vehicle kind of, but look at how beautiful this is. Maybe someday, but you know, I don't know. I was thinking about that. I don't know if I would give up Charlene or go bigger than Charlene. I don't know, maybe someday, never say never. But I just thought if anybody was interested, oh, it's a 2015 300 DS engine, 32 inch Concord Coachman. Oh, 63.5. It's only got 34K on it. It has a fireplace and three TVs and two slide outs. Holy cow. Okay. Well, I don't know. They don't give a, they don't give a phone number. But, uh, yeah, if you're interested, I guess... They must be like going through um, this place. So if you're interested, call Mike's LP Gas RV Parts and Service in Maplewood. Oh wait, here it is. I don't know why they put it so small here, but put it so big there. 34K miles, one and a half years, full warranty, transferable, runs great, always maintain, 63.5, 651-755, Three seven six five, and maybe I'll see you out on the road. I'll see you dumping with me at Mike's LPG. Okay, time for Charlene to uh, get a dump it here. The hens are here. They saw another hen coming and uh, decided to welcome me. So I made it to the yurt and. Uh, Oh my goodness, I didn't know. I thought you just parked, you know, drove there. But no, you gotta pull your stuff in. Which is fine, but I thought I'd be getting a lot of work done in the van this weekend, or these next two days. But yeah, they have chickens, and guess what? They have fields of pollinators. Like, they have things set up just for the pollinators. So he told me where to go, and I'm gonna show you what I'm walking into now. And you'll see, I got a ways to go. But um, I guess you'll see it how, when I see it. I'm gonna turn this around. Okay. I hope there's no bears or snakes here. Uh, I'm doing my bear spray and my 35. But neither one are open right now. So I guess I gotta go across some little fence. So. We'll see where that takes us. Okay, we made it. Oh, look at how cute that is. It's even bigger in the pictures. Oh, and look at somebody's campfire is still smoldering. Uh, so, and all it is is I'm gonna show you. Turn around. Uh, it's just all trees but look at I saw a monarch there's a monarch I was just oh my god oh, oh hi monarch I was just telling somebody that I don't see butterflies anymore especially monarchs so oh I thought there was oh no <laughs> there was a bed in here uh, I don't know I thought it was a little different. Well, there's a chair. I don't know. I guess I'm sleeping on the ground tonight. I'll bring my blankets. So I just hauled both of those up at the same time. Had I known it would be a workout, I wouldn't have gone to the gym and taken a shower today. I was okay. Bear Gorillas in the wild. Tracy Tischler in the wild see if she survives the island by myself I may have to eat some berries over there I wonder if bears like berries because there's some right dangling above the tent there so okay well I'll leave you with a cliffhanger like Joy did this is to be continued I don't know if it'll be Wednesday because 
I'm gonna get footage and I can't edit it because there's no Wi-Fi out here. I mean, I have my personal hotspot, but um, so it might be a little later than Wednesday, but I don't know, I'll keep you posted. Okay, go and make adventure, no matter how big or how small. It does not have to be this big. You can just go walk around the block. That may be safer, smarter, I don't know. Go call someone you love and as Joy says, tell them that you love them. I heard some already. And don't you dare forget your magic. I'll see you in the next one. Well, hopefully the bear doesn't get me. Okay.